living in the country is somewhat different than living in the city, especially if you live in an apartment or a condominium. So in this video, I will try to show you a few of the things that are different when you live in the country versus living in the city. If you like us, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe and enjoy the video. In the country, everything's further apart. So you need some kind of all-terrain vehicle, golf cart, something like that to get around. For us, it's 100 yards from the house to the mailbox, another 100 yards from the house back down to the shop. So we're going back and forth all the time. And it's, we've only got six acres. In the county, you need a burn pile. The county will only pick up household garbage in the cans. So all the limbs and other wood products that you come up with, you either have to burn them or you have to haul them off to the county dump or county landfill. Well, this is part of living in the country. Find uh, snakes in different places. Uh, last month she found a, a snake. Uh-uh, get away from that. It's just a, just a black king snake. He's got a little bit of white underneath his chin there, so he's uh, not a black racer. He's a black king snake. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and let him go away from the house. I went back to the shed behind the, behind the house, and lo and behold, there he was. And he jumped and scared me, and I scared him. And so now it's time to take him over someplace else and let him go so he doesn't eat our baby birds. But uh, it is good to have something like this around to eat rats and mice. Well, that snake's gone. Like I said uh, a month ago, Deborah found one wrapped around the gutter, uh, the gutter downspout right there at uh, a bird nest. And uh, apparently, he had already eaten the birds there. And uh, earlier this week, we found a small ringneck snake in the pool. Uh, and it hadn't been very long ago, we found a small rat uh, snake in the pool. But it's just something about living in the country. Boo. All right. She said there's a snake in here today. We'll just take a look and see. Move. Oh. Yes. He's alive. Yeah, look at that. Come on, get on my hand. Looks like another baby ringneck snake. Boy, she must have, whoever the mama was, she had a bunch of them, I guess. Let him out in the woods. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of things different about being in the country. Uh, you have a lot of things that you do yourself instead of uh, hiring it out to somebody else. Like when a tree falls down, and if you're in the country and you've got trees, the trees are going to fall. You just get a chainsaw and cut them up yourself. You can see on this one, I've already cut up a lot of the small stuff and pulled it off the burn pile. But now it's time to go ahead and get the rest out. <laughs> And just like that, it's done. In the county, you need a burn pile. The county will only pick up household garbage in the cans. So all the limbs and other wood products that you come up with, you either have to burn them or you have to haul them off to the county dump or county landfill. And this is just a picture of grass.
that's true. But underneath is a septic tank. A septic tank is where all our sewage from the house goes. It goes in a septic tank and then it has a group of pipes going out from it under the grass called a drain field where all the excess water goes out. But the septic tank holds all the solids and hopefully the solids get dissolved by the bacteria and so forth. Now, if you live in the city, you're more than likely connected to a piping system that takes your sewage to a treatment facility called a wastewater uh, treatment facility or wastewater plant. But you and I know it's just a sewage plant. And we have septic tanks because outhouses are no longer permitted. And besides, this is much, much better. And there's the well. So on the well, you've got a pump house. This is ours. Let's take a look on the inside. That's the well down there. Here's my tank. And that's my water lines. The left heads back up to the house and to the sprinkler system and all that. You've got the little controller right there that starts and stops the pump. Pressure switch down there on the water to let it know that you've got enough water pump pumped into the tank. In the country, you also need a pickup truck. Some kind of a truck to haul things back and forth. Whether you've got a boat, you've got a trailer, you have to have a trailer. Um, whatever, it has to have some type of truck. They don't have to have a big truck. It could be a small truck, but it needs to be a truck in the country. You're also going to need a trailer. It's amazing the amount of things that you have to haul around. And once you have a trailer, then you end up hauling around some stuff occasionally for other people as well. But out in the country, everybody's got their own trailer, so it's not that big of a deal. Now in the country, you usually have more space, so therefore you have more buildings because you have more stuff you want to store and keep out of the sun and the rain and the weather and so forth, uh, such as this pole barn. Now, for the pole barn, Deborah and I built it ourselves. Uh, I bought a kit um, with uh, had all the materials, and uh, we I rented the uh, um, I rented the articulating booms and other equipment that we used to to build it, and we built it ourselves. Then I ran water and power uh, down to it. When I ran water and power down to the shop, now you can see I've got a concrete floor on the pole barn, but uh, we didn't do that uh, when the shop was built. I uh, asked them to give me a price to go ahead and concrete in the floor here, and they did a perfect job on it. Oh, you also need some kind of a shop because your garage is not going to be big enough for all your junk that you accumulate in the country. Junk being all the extra stuff that you need, such as zero turn mower, spreader, extra ladders, whatever the junk is that you accumulate in the country. You're usually going to have a little bit more grass to cut than you do in the city. This is three acres of the front yard, and it's pretty much all grass. So you either need a larger mower, such as a zero turn, or a tractor with a mower deck, or both, because the tractor doesn't get in the corners and stuff very well, so you still need something like a zero turn. And then you have your zero turn mowers. They're a little bit different than a regular garden tractor. Uh, the regular lawnmower that you see around the city. Uh, they're usually bigger, they're faster, uh, bigger engines, and they don't have a steering wheel. There's a lot of variations to the different types of zero turn mowers. Some are really big. Um, some of them can go up to ten or twelve thousand dollars, the really fancy, more commercial type. Uh, but for us, this works out real well. We had a tractor for a while, but the zero turn works better for us. It gets around the trees better along the fence line closer and uh, it's just easier to use than having a tractor and a zero turn. A scrap iron pile. You end up with scrap metal that eventually you're going to have to take down to a dump somewhere or a recycling center. When you have a trailer full then it's time to go ahead and move it. So in the country you need a pantry because You've got a large freezer because you've got a garden. So you have a pantry because you live in the country. It just makes it easier to come out the pantry to get something and run around to the grocery store every time you turn around. 
So stuff that you use a lot of, you just keep a lot of it here. And the door is has seals on it, it's an outside door. So it keeps all the mice and bugs and stuff like that out as long as you keep the doors closed.